Now, uh, I have great delight in introducing our Rotary International President's representative to you. Uh, at every district conference, it's assumed that the International President of Rotary will be present, and that is Ron Burton uh, this year. Ron is from uh, Norman, Oklahoma. Uh, but not, Ron is not Superman, uh, so because he's not Superman, he cannot make district conferences in over 500 districts around the world. He can't do that. So he appoints personal representatives to attend district conferences, and these personal representatives have two tasks. One is to bring greetings from Ron and to emphasize anything that he himself uh, would want to say to us, but then also just to highlight for us not only the work of Rotary International, uh, but just to continue to remind us that we're part of something much, much bigger than just uh, our local clubs or just even our regional district. We are part of the world's leading humanitarian service organization. So tonight, uh, his bio is in your program, so I won't read that to you. Uh, but I do want you to know that uh, Jim Roney came to us from Maryland, and he came to us last night, and he was part of our planning committee last night, and then we had some social time afterward. And uh, tonight we can, I think, pronounce that Jim Roney is one of us. <laughs> and I'd like for you to treat him as one of us. So I'd like to introduce and welcome Jim Roney as our president's representative. Good evening, everyone. I can't tell you what an honor it is to be asked by Ron Burton to be his personal representative to the home of Rotary. Uh, I, I truly feel that this is an honor that should have gone to someone else, but I'm going to take it. This is, this is truly an outstanding district. And I want to thank Governor Cliff for his hospitality and his warm friendship, but also DGN Osi and DGN D Ron, who's also my aide for the weekend, uh, Bob Blackman for picking me up at the airport yesterday and getting me into RI headquarters. So I want to give you then the official greetings of our Rotary International President, Ron Burton but also give you the greetings of our Rotary International Vice President, Ann Matthews, who is the director for my zones, zones 33 and 34, and also the greetings from my district governor, Dan Hoftailing. So he's your classmate in my district of 7630. And 7630 is the Eastern Shore of Maryland and the entire state of Delaware. And as everyone knows, you can drive through Delaware in about four minutes, so it's <laughs> not that big. I want to start tonight just by reflecting a little bit on the four-way test. Four-way test is the greatest statement of business and personal ethics, I don't know, since the Ten Commandments. But you know, it presents us at times with some dilemmas that are very, very difficult to deal with. So I want you right now to kind of consider the following scenario in terms of the four-way test. You're playing in your club's golf club championship. You're standing on the 18th tee, tied for the lead with your fellow competitor right next to you. You have the honors, so you tee off and you hit this drive right down the middle of the fairway. It leaves you 130 yards into the green and you turn and your competitor now acknowledges what a fantastic golfer you are. So, and he gets nervous, he gets up, he hits his tee ball, duck hooks it left right into the woods. So being the good sport that you are, you go over to the woods and you begin to search for your fellow competitor's ball. And you search for a couple minutes, don't, and your fellow competitor says, look, go out in the fairway, play your ball into the green. You go hit. If I don't find the ball in the next couple of minutes, the five minute limit is up and you're gonna win the championship. So you say, okay. You go out, you take your nine iron, you stripe a beautiful shot right into the green. It lands 20 feet below the hole. You turn to accept the congratulations of your opponent when you hear, found it, whack! Ball comes flying out of the woods. And you watch this ball soar, land on the green, bounce twice, and roll to within six inches of the hole. <laughs> now here's the moral dilemma. 
do you pull the cheating bastard's ball out of your pocket <laughs> and confront him with it? Or do you keep your mouth shut? <laughs> Let's run down this scenario in terms of the four-way test that you will confront him. Okay, now this is the audience participation part of the program. So, the four-way test of the things we think, say, and do in terms of this scenario, first, <laughs> Well, it's probably a little bit more truth than either of you want to expose at that time. <laughs> Second, is this a fair well, it's probably fair to the rest of the field, <laughs> and it would serve both of you good to be exposed as the cheaters that you are. <laughs> Third, <laughs> no. <laughs> Fourth, not to the two of you standing there, but it's sure going to benefit to the guy that was going to come in third. Four-way test is tough, man. It is tough. Now, my profession is property and casualty insurance. I spend my, I take, make my living stealing customers away from the Allstate guy and the State Farm lady and that little green lizard that runs around the county. <laughs> And that is in conflict with being fair to all concerned. I'm fair to my customers, and I'm sure going to be fair to me, but my competitors, that's not fair. But of course, my competitors are trying to steal my customers at the same time, so I don't feel too bad about it. And that's the beauty of being Rotarians, because every week we get to go to a Rotary meeting, seek absolution, get the blessing from our club president, go and sin no more, and then we go out and do it all again. The four-way test is tough, but it's a great selling point as well at times for us to attract new members. Many folks feel that the emphasis on conducting ourselves in a manner that exudes class and ethics is a fantastic way to sell Rotary. But that can be a hard sell. And selling is our mission. It's our mission as Rotary leaders. Selling Rotary to new customers, to prospective members, and then to continue to sell Rotary to our current customers, our current members. What do we have to sell to our new customers? What do we use to engage new customers that will present them with the value that they want to buy? Well, I submit that the greatest thing that we have to sell is the object of Rotary. Yeah. The object of Rotary is our statement of values, and it contains fantastic selling points to our prospects. It's what makes Rotary different from every other competitor that we have out there right now. And it helps us target the market segment that we wish to attract. Because our object of Rotary talks about networking, both social networking and business networking as an opportunity to grow and to serve. It talks about leadership development with an emphasis on encouraging and fostering high ethical standards in conducting our business. And what could be more valuable now to a young professional to be able to say that he belongs to an organization that exudes ethics, high standards of business ethics? In my office, I have a certificate on the wall that says that I'm a certified insurance counselor. So when a customer comes in, they look at that and they can say, well, I guess he knows a little bit about what he's talking about when it comes to insurance. But right next to it, I have the object of Rotary and I have the four-way test. So when a customer comes in and he sees that, okay, he may know what he's talking about in insurance, but he also says that he wants to make sure that when he conducts his business, he does it ethically. That is value to me, and I think it's value to potential customers that we have, particularly the young professionals. <coughs> Our object, object of Rotary also <coughs> said, talks about dignifying every occupation as an opportunity to serve our community and applying the ideal of service in our local communities while recognizing that Rotary allows us the opportunity to do great things worldwide. Any service organization 
that's out there right now can offer an individual the opportunity to serve. But we offer much, much more. The value that we offer to a new member and to our current members is the opportunity to grow as a person, grow as a business person, grow as a leader, and as a humanitarian. Now I'm gonna make the argument that the primary purpose right now of Rotary International, not the foundation, of Rotary International, is to create new Rotarians. And their board of directors, I believe, is starting to recognize that with their continued now emphasis on membership and helping our districts and helping our clubs and do everything they can to build strong clubs through building strong membership. And that's the object, I think, of every Rotary Club is to go out and create new Rotarians. Now, you don't create a Rotarian by bringing them into the club. You know that. You get a new member. But that's the first step. That's the initial sell that we have to make to get a customer. And the trick is to make that customer a loyal customer over the course of the first two or three years of membership. Now, how can clubs do a better job at this? The emphasis on strategic planning, I think, is key. And this district, from what I've seen, has done an excellent job of providing leadership on the district level on strategic planning. But then you have to execute that plan. And I have a couple of suggestions for you to include in your action plan. First is to find the right prospects. Find the right customers. Target your market by understanding who you are as a club and what the type of prospect will fit best into your club's culture. Now, when you start thinking that way, you may have to do a little club visioning. Start to understand who you are as a club. And you may find that your club culture is gonna to have to change due to the marketing, or due to the market that you're dealing with. However, you need to care more about, about filtering these new customers and filtering the customers so that you increase the chances of them becoming loyal customers, long-time Rotarians, not just increasing the volume. You also need to build superior value in relation to your competition. Use all the assets that Rotary and Rotary programs that you have at your disposal. Rotary Leadership Institute, the Youth Exchange programs, all of the programs of the foundation. Know these and use them and use them so that you can answer the questions and objections that you may face when you're trying to sell Rotary to a new prospect. And as far as your current members, value them. Treat your Rotarians as assets. Protect them. Value them. Feed them. Don't let them slip from your fingers. Engage them by keeping them busy, but also by finding out what they want. What do they want from their membership? Every new Rotarian that enters a club has an agenda. They're joining for a reason. You as club leaders need to recognize what they want and then do your best to fulfill those needs. Everybody has an agenda from the 25 year member all the way down to the guy you just inducted last week. Make sure that their Rotary experience is meaningful to them that adds value to their life. Do your homework, and then do your best to meet their expectations. I think all of this relates to what Ron Burton had in mind when he came up with his theme for Engaging Rotary this year. Engaging Rotarians in the true value of their membership will allow them the opportunity to change not only the lives of so many others, but to change their own life as well. And I have another take on the theme. Uh, it took me a while to really grasp what Engage Rotary Changed Lives meant to me. Um, my buddy, and Pat, our buddy, Mike Yasner, who was district governor last year, our classmate over in 6440, he started his pets program a year before Bronze Theme came out with a picture on Facebook of him kneeling in front of every club PE with a fake engagement ring. He wanted to engage them in Rotary. <laughs> and that was the first thing that came to mind when I saw this theme, and I thought, that's really not what I have in mind. <laughs> the word engage to me means to put something like a machine or an engine into action. 
It's like in the old Star Trek program with William Shatner. Yeah, I know. I don't look old enough to have been able to see the Star Trek programs back in the early 70s, but I did see them. They were one of my favorites. And remember, Captain Kirk would get the Enterprise in some pickle, and he would uh, turn to Mr. Sulu and say, engage warp drive. And Sulu would hit a few buttons. <laughs> yeah, you remember that. Su yeah, Sulu would hit a few buttons, and the Enterprise would take off screaming across the universe at warp speed, somehow not hitting anything where they were going. But their reality changed. Where there's few buttons, their reality was now different from what it was a second ago. And then Scotty would call up, you know, Captain, I'm giving her all she's got. <laughs> I love that show. <laughs> Rotary is our engine. It's an engine with overwhelming opportunities to change lives. And as Rotarians, we have that engine at our disposal, an engine with enormous potential, enormous power, and it's available exclusively to us. And it's up to us to recognize when we can hit that button. That'll cause our reality to change. Now, I'll give you a recent example of that of the power that we have from an experience we had at my home club in Northeast Maryland. And my home club, the name of the town is Northeast, two words. And my dark chamber of commerce says it's a destination, not a direction. <laughs> so our club is 23 members. We've been around for 24 years. But right outside of town is a industrial area. And we have a company out there called Operative Experience Incorporated. And this is a small manufacturer just outside of town. It was started a few years ago by Dr. Robert Buckman. Now, Bob is a retired surgeon and a full professor of surgery at Temple University. But Bob was also a uh, tinkerer. He likes to build things, too, and experiment. Bob saw a need for a better way to train surgeons and other medical professionals other than practicing on cadavers or watching film. So he began building simulators, mannequins that can be operated on time and time again. And this grew into a business. And now he and his staff build high fidelity physical stimulators, simulators, anatomically correct bodies with realistic skin, bone, muscle, organs, blood vessels, and nerves. They bleed, they breathe, they react to nerves. They are scary. I was in their, their facility and watching, and these things are just weird, they're, but they're unbelievably realistic. Now, his primary market right now is the US State Department, who's buying them to provide to combat surgical training teams. He produces these mannequins that present with wound patterns representative of catastrophic combat injuries, like IED blasts and things. Having military medics practice on these simulators has drastically reduced the mistakes commonly made in the field when confronted by such massive injuries. Now, while this is Bob's main cash flow, he wants desperately to expand the humanitarian side of his business. He has seen firsthand the tremendously high mortality rate of women and children in third world countries, resulting from cesarean births. Many village midwives are ill-equipped and untrained to perform even simple C-sections, while many doctors in third world countries can't handle the common complications that come with a, a C-section. It's estimated now that 150,000 deaths occur annually due to childbirth, and 30% of those are the result of botched C-sections, botched sections that could have been prevented if the people had been trained. Operative Experience manufactures now fully operative, anatomically simulated pregnant women that provide the opportunity for C-section training, both simple C-sections and those with various complications. Training on a simulator for two weeks can equal of several years' worth of field experience, because in the field it doesn't happen often enough to become comfortable with it. Now, Bob came to our club back in January, 
made a presentation about his business, and described his frustration with the bureaucracy involved in trying to get grants to take this training to where it's needed in particularly Uganda because he has some connections there. When he got done, a couple of our members started talking and we thought maybe we could help. So we called Dr. Bob, we said maybe we can help you, so let's set a meeting up. So a few weeks later, three of us went to meet uh, Bob Buckman. Um, myself, Chris Ann Zepp, who is a past club president and who's championing this uh, project, <clears throat> and Debbie Gibson. And Debbie is a brand new, less than a year member of our club, but she is, wants to be involved in something and she was fascinated by this, so we invited her to come along. And the three of us sat there with this brilliant surgeon, this innovative business person, and we saw somebody that was just totally de dejected. He could not find the money and the means to get his simulators and trainers where they were needed. He's willing to provide these simulators at cost. And he has the volunteers willing and ready to go and train people how to use them. But he just can't get his vision off the ground. That's when we hit the rotary engine button. I looked at Chris Ann and I said, you know, doesn't this sound like a vocational training team to you? So we told Bob, he said, we have the ability through a global grant through our district to fund a team to go to wherever you want, probably Uganda, and provide that training that you're talking about. We told him that his vision describes perfectly the maternal and child health area of focus of the foundation. Now we also told him that the process is detailed, it's not easy, but it's a lot easier than what he had been going through with these other grants that have been turned down in the past. And that District 7630, we had one of the first successful VTTs to go out under the Future Vision Program because we were a pilot district. And we have a lot of experience with, um, with global grants, both writing them and implementing them and seeing them come to a conclusion. And also that the Rotary Foundation staff while they're sticklers for detail, they will work as hard as the club and the district to make sure that his project will be a winner. At that moment, by engaging Rotary, we changed one life immediately. Dr. Bob's emotions changed. He started to lean forward, his face brightened, started to comprehend that just maybe this little Rotary Club of Northeast may be the answer that he's been seeking for the past couple of years. He began asking more and more questions, got more and more excited. Then with our help, Bob's vision that started in his barn up in Fair Hill, Maryland, where we started building these things two years ago, may now be actualized. Engaging the rotary engine also potentially changed the lives of many, many more people as we believe that annually 45,000 women and newborns can be saved from needless death if we get these VTT teams over to Uganda and they start training people to train others on the simulators. And you know what? One more life changed that day too. Debbie Gibson went from being a member of the Rotary Club in Northeast to being a Rotarian. She sat there a bit in awe of what we were able to come up with and she realized what Rotary can do and what she's a part of how we can impact the world. That was her rotary moment. And I can tell you now, she's gonna be an engaged rotary for a long time to come. That's powerful. Yes, sir. That's truly engaging rotary, putting to work the assets that we have at our disposal, resulting in saved lives, in lives impacted, and lives changed forever. It's the opportunity that we have as Rotarians exclusively that we have every day. Opportunities that no other organization can offer. The value that we have at our disposal to sell to potential members and to keep our current members engaged in what we do. And it all starts at the club level. With every Rotarian ready to hit that button, ready to turn the key, whatever it is to engage the engine, whenever they recognize that engaging Rotary truly does change lives. I want to thank you again for your hospitality. 
Um, Rotary does change lives. Uh, I don't have this written down. Two days ago, I knew none of you. You had no idea where Cecil County, Maryland was. And in 24 hours, I have made so many new friends. And that's the power of Rotary too. That's the, that's the number one focus of the, the first object of Rotary, is acquaintance. And now I can call so many Midwesterners friends of mine that I didn't have two days ago. And I thank you for that. Now, so I hope you enjoy the rest of the conference. Uh, I'll be around to speak with as many of you as I can over the next two days. God bless you, God bless Rotary, and let's have fun for the rest of the night.